You may have heard the myth that the SR-71 was designed to leak fuel. Let's break that down. The SR-71 was no more designed to leak fuel than an average car tire is designed to leak air. The SR-71 was designed to continually operate at speeds over Mach 3, and where there's speed, there's friction, and friction means heat. The SR-71's hull was primarily composed of titanium, which is very heat resistant, but still expands when heated to the 400 degrees Fahrenheit it experienced when at Mach 3 speeds. Likewise, the skin would contract when the SR dropped below Mach speed. The engineers of the SR-71 designed the aircraft to be able to withstand this repetitive expansion and contraction of the skin, but it led to an issue, how the SR-71 held its fuel. The SR-71 did not have typical metal fuel tanks. Instead, it featured an innovative, flexible, bladder-like fuel tank system called a Total Wet Wing Fuel Tank System, where the fuel was directly contained by the aircraft's skin itself. The gaps in the skin panels were filled with a special type of sealant made to not only hold back the fuel, but to also hold up to the repetitive expansion and contraction experienced. The problem with this repetitive expansion and contraction of the skin, combined with the extreme temperature variances experienced, eventually caused the sealant to deteriorate and break down, causing leaks. Fuel sealants were applied and reapplied during maintenance intervals, and when equipped with fresh seals, the SR-71 did not leak, or leaked very little. The cost and time required to completely reseal an SR-71, with its high demand for mission readiness, meant that unfortunately some leaks had to be accepted. It wasn't a problem, per se, but still an issue. It was an issue that the rate of leakage and when to replace the seals was considered and built into a maximum allowable leakage chart that listed the limit of leak rates in certain areas and when seal replacement was required. SR-71 pilot Stormy Bondaro is on the record stating, It was designed to leak fuel. We get such a laugh at the Lockheed plant when people say that. No airplane, ever, has been designed to leak fuel. People try and imagine, well, if the thing is expanding during flight and then contracting, we see pictures of it with the fuel underneath, it must have been designed that way. No, the first airplanes, SR-71s, were designed with a sealant that sealed the bottom of the wing, the bottom of the fuselage, which is the bottom of the fuel tank. There's no tanks inside of it, per se. What you see on the outside is the fuel tank itself. That caulking, that sealant, after you went hot and cold, and then hot and then cold several times, would start to break down and it would start leaking. If it got more than 5 drops per minute in this location, or 10 drops per minute in that location, then the crew chief and other people would have to try and fix it. It was not designed to leak fuel. Did it leak fuel? Absolutely. So, the SR-71 did leak fuel at times, but not by design, and nor was it a desired outcome. This leads to the other common myth that goes, the SR-71 leaked so much fuel that they had to fill it completely up and had to immediately refuel after takeoff. This is not true. While the amount or rate of fuel leakage varied depending upon where one specific SR-71 lied in its maintenance interval timeline, on average they leaked relatively little compared to its capacity. SR-71s were not completely filled up before takeoff. In fact, they were only partially filled with fuel at takeoff for safety reasons, such as if an engine failed it would be much easier to land, as well as much easier on the brakes and tires. This is also the same reason why commercial aircraft may dump fuel before unexpectedly having to land if diverted due to weather conditions, technical problems, or emergency landings immediately after takeoff. The SR-71's unique design allowed it to achieve its incredible speeds and altitude with a detriment at low speeds and low altitude. Due to its suboptimal low speed design, it had to use its afterburners at takeoff and during its climb to altitude greatly increasing its already high rate of fuel consumption with the partial fuel that it had at takeoff. There's also another reason the SR-71 had to refuel at takeoff that's not talked about often. During Mach 3 cruise, the JP-7 fuel in its six fuel tanks heated to over 300 degrees Fahrenheit, with the aircraft's titanium skin reaching over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, heightening the volatility of the fuel. This led to a limitation, a maximum speed of Mach 2.6 unless an inert atmosphere was maintained inside the fuel bladders. This required the SR-71 to be equipped with nitrogen tanks that held 260 liters of liquid nitrogen, so that as the SR-71 consumed fuel, the growing empty space in the fuel bladders was gradually replaced with nitrogen gas. This meant that after takeoff and achieving altitude, the SR-71 had to refuel with JP-7 so that it could then pressurize its fuel tanks with nitrogen gas and go faster than Mach 2.6. So, the SR-71 had to immediately refuel after takeoff because, number one, it was only partially filled with fuel at takeoff. Number two, its inefficient flight characteristics at low speed and low altitude made it continually use its afterburners during and after takeoff to achieve altitude. And number three, it could not go faster than Mach 2.6 without full tanks 
or partial tanks pressurized with nitrogen gas. The next time you hear someone say the SR-71 was designed to leak fuel or it leaked so much fuel on the runway it had to immediately refuel, let them know the facts.